Well, welcome to the old classic car channel here. Original photos of British cars of the 1950s and 1960s, part 12. And to begin with, a pair of wonderful photographs uh, provided by Bernard of the Marauder, the very rare Rover P4 base Marauder that he owned back in the 1960s. Uh, only about 50 of these were built between 1950 and 52 by a couple of ex-Rover employees who took a bit of time out to create these cars. Fascinating things, shorter chassis, six-cylinder engine, and so on. Um, interesting, this car, MBP2, is still around. Uh, if you do a quick Google Images search, you'll see photographs of it. It's now like a creamy yellow colour, um, but it's taxed and on the road. So that is very, very good news indeed. I'll carry on with these cars of the 50s and 60s. We have MFM175. This is the estate car version of the A40 van. This is the Austin A40 Countryman. That's a Chester registration plate you can see there that came into being in May of 1950. So that dates this photograph, or at least the vehicle, pretty closely. Now, over to Ireland. This is on the west coast of Ireland in Galway. We've got a bevy of classic British cars here. We've got a 100E with a young lady stood there. We've got a Morris Minor 1000, an Anglia Estate, a Standard 10, a Mark 1 Cortina. And the foreign until open in the background there is that a Simca or Rond perhaps? More British goodness here. Now at first I thought we were looking at a Ford Console Mark 1 but that um, crease on the front wing there tells us that this is actually a Zephyr Mark 1. The wing moulding is slightly different between the console and the Zephyr so this is a six cylinder car. Very smart too. Another classic Austin here and a couple of ladies stood with an Austin A40 Devon. Um, the Devon was the four-door car, and you can see one of those suction uh, little screen demisters just in the windscreen there, held on with a couple of little rubber suckers. Um, they invariably fall off in the hot weather, but in the winter they were quite useful. Now, Morris Minor, there's a chap here, stood with his Morris Minor, nice socks, sir. Now, what registration plate is that? I'm guessing, I think this batch of photos came from New Zealand, but I could be wrong. Um, but let me know if you recognise that plate, or indeed those socks. Now my thanks to Peter Ward, he supplied many of the colour and black and white photos that appear in this particular collection. These were taken in about 1965, these colour shots, and we've got a bevy of beauties here. I think this is on the old A1, the North Road. We've got an Austin Cambridge on the left hand side, a Mark II Jaguar, Cortina and many more. Now back to photos in black and white, we have WMB874 a slightly tired looking MG Magnet. This photo, another one of Peter's, um, these were taken about 1976 or thereabouts. And another of Peter's photos, back to the colour shots in Brighton, I think we are. And a, oof, a lovely little Morris here, something going on with those wipers, I think they need parking a bit better than that. But saying that, the Morris Minor in the background is just the same as is the VW Beetle. Not quite sure what's going on with these people's wipers. Now back to Vauxhalls here, 202 CCV, that's a Cornwall registered F-type Vauxhall Victor and looks like it's got a few miles under its wheels. That's one of the revised cars, um, dates to about late 1958 I believe. Next up, one of Peter's photos again, PYF 718 Sunbeam Talbot. That car was registered in the London area in 1955, but the photo was much later because you can see a Land Crab, an Austin or Morris 1800 on the left, and a little, now is that a Riley Elf or the Wolseley Hornet? It's a 1965 car. And here we go again, 1965. We've got a Mark II Jaguar on the left hand side there driving along. We'll see a few photos taken in this location during this collection. There's a little Austin E35 and a whole gaggle of British cars parked up on, on the right hand side there. What a feast for the eyes. Another classic here, this time a Wolseley. We've got a Wolseley 444 YPF908. That puts this car as being Surrey registered. Um, sometime after October 1955, a bit of rot in those rear arches. So that'll need catching fairly soon if this car is going to survive much longer. Another rear three-quarter view, this time ODU 179, and this is a Daimler. Um, looks like a Daimler Conquest. You can just about see the D uh, moulded into the uh, rear bumper there. There's like a badge in the middle of the rear bumper. That's the only real giveaway uh, from the back that this is a Daimler. 
as opposed to a Lanchester, which uh, was also based on the Daimler. Anyway, another colour photo here. We've got a standard 10 buzzing along, nice roof rack. And in the background on the left there, you can see the 10's replacement, the short-lived replacement, the standard pennant, which was a bit like a standard 10, but with pointier front and rear wings. Uh, HA Viva as well, and a little pop on the right-hand side. Now, we've got a couple of foreign jobs in this one, but taking centre stage is another F-Type Vauxhall Victor 4109MY, one of those fastback Sunbeam Rapiers alongside it. Like I say, these photos, um, this is another one of Peter's date to about 1976 or thereabouts, so all these cars have a few years under their belt. Now we've got a Mercedes Fintail, but we're not interested in that. More interesting is that Farina Grey Mark 1 Austin A40 Farina in the background being pursued by a Mark 1 Mini Deluxe. Very, very nice indeed. Two wonderful photos now. I do like this. WRL 10, a very tatty looking old Austin. Look at that crease in the front wing at the back edge of the front wing there. That's a, that's a very tired looking old car. That's a Cornwall registration dating to 1956. The car is an Austin A105 Westminster. Certainly looks like it needs plenty of TLC. There's a rear three quarter view of the same car. A huge hefty tow bar on the back. But look at the rot on the top of those back wings. That's a very common rot spot on these cars and the later Cambridges. But yeah, that's looking pretty tired. I suspect that car isn't around anymore. Another cracking old colour picture here. We've got, what have we got there? Another F-Type Victor, a bus of some description. Uh, Morris Minor and a PA Vauxhall. Probably a Cresta going off the uh, two-tone paint scheme. Now parked up in front of what looks to be a Fiat, I think, we have a very nice Rover P4 100 RPE. Very nice two-tone car indeed. Quality, quality car, but just look out for rot around the back end underneath those. Um, but great cars. Another street scene here, we've got 6923 RK, very, very close to the photographer. This is a circa 1961 Wolseley. Now this could be a 699 or a 6110. I'm not quite familiar enough with them and I think 61 was the change over year. Got various other classic vehicles there, got a Moggy van and many more. Much older now, got a KLE 742, lovely old Alvis, very nice indeed. And a much later HC Viva, like I say, some of Peter's black and white photos at any rate date to about 1976, so slightly after the main time period for this video, but the vehicles that are included are broadly in the right age range. Now here's another fantastic photo. There's that pale blue A35 again and a Minx and a comma lorry behind that. On the right hand side a Zephyr 6 and Mark 1 Ford Zephyr, a 1965 Cortina behind that and one of the estate car versions of the uh, Austin or Morris Farina range. There's that Mark 2 Jaguar again, 502 EYR. That's a London series from late 1962. There's E35 again in the background. A little Vauxhall 1 alongside it, 101 rather, and we'll see a better shot of that shortly. There's a couple of hearses on the left there, well, one hearse and one limousine, Austin limousine. Vel 52. Now, Peter did say I'd seen mention of this in a, an older copy of Practical Classics a few years ago, but it doesn't show up as being on the DVLA website. Um, so is this car still around, perhaps laid up, not registered, or maybe it's still around but it's lost its original registration? If you know, please let me know in the comments. Another roadside photograph from the mid-1970s and a slightly weather-beaten looking Riley RM. There's a 1275 GT on the right-hand side there with the Dunlop Denovo wheels, the run-flat tyres. There we go again, there's a better view of that Vauxhall 101, a taxi no less, that's on a B reg, so that's 1964. And the photograph dates to 1965, so it was a fairly new car at the time. You can see that Mark II and the A35 in the background. There's a grey A30 in the distance on the left there, but mostly British cars. Here's an interesting one, 600 HKM. This is a standard Vanguard Vignali, which was the uh, Vignali updated version of the Phase 3 Vanguard. But this one, for some reason, has got a Jaguar Leaper on the bonnet. And you can see headrests on the front seat, so is that different seats? Or are those those clip-on headrests that you could buy in the 60s? With a gaggle of cars here and Peter avoiding being run over by a console Cortina. You can just about see the console badge on the middle of the bonnet there. That 
marks this one out as a very early Mark 1 Cortina 969 HHO. We've got an Anglia on the right and an Austin 1100 and a Morris van and so on. And here, ACT1 Act 1. Amazingly, this registration appears to have disappeared. I'm surprised no one picked that one up. Another E-series Vauxhall wearing it back in the mid-1970s, a very grubby car, so perhaps not long for this world. And there's a comma PB on the left and a Rover P5B on the right. More action down near Brighton. And we have a 1965 Mini. And again, look at all the wipers. None of them are parked correctly. I'm not quite sure why that is. I mean, many cars back then didn't have self-parking wipers. And maybe drivers just didn't bother uh, waiting to switch them off. You know, and just left them where they were on the screen. Who knows? Anyway, 112 VKK. Here we've got a Singer Gazelle. That's a Kent registered car. And that series came into being in October of 1962. So this car dates to around about then. It's clearly for sale. You can see a for sale sign in the windscreen. I'm trying to work out if that's 850 modified to 950 or vice versa. You can just about see the price in the window there. It looks like 950. Um, but either way, it's a very smart looking car. Given that this photo was taken in 1976 and the car is a 62, so it's what, 14 years old, but it looks like a very well preserved car. I wonder if that one's still around anywhere. Back to street scenes, nice colour street scene there. We've got a Mark 1 Cortina Super on the left, Austin 1100. What's that behind it? Is that a Sunbeam Talbot? Looks like it. There's a Farina parked up on the right hand side in the distance as well. Look at those fashions. Lots of people stood at the bus stop waiting for a bus. And there's a closer look at the same Austin 1100. Once again, thanks to Peter for sending these wonderful photographs over. He was looking for a home for these old photographs that he had printed many years ago and uh, was so glad to receive them. So thank you very much. We've got an FB Victor on the left there. There's a Mini in the distance. All sorts of classic cars. Here's an interesting one, is a, well at the time, a pretty aged Austin A40 Devon PVX 799 and that's Peter's, I assume that's Peter's Singer Hunter in the background on the left there and uh, there's a much more modern car up on that billboard, a, a VW Passat our car styling had changed but not for the better really Now TLF 248, this is one of my favourite cars actually from the 1950s and I'd very happily buy one of these it's the Wolseley 1550, so it's very similar to the 444, but this had the B-series engine, the 1500cc B-series engine, making it a very usable car indeed. That's a London car from late 1956. Mostly BMC, but we do have a bit of Triumph as well. We've got a Morris van and a BMC, so Austin or a Morris badge to J4 forward control van behind the Morris Minor. On the right-hand side, a Herald Estate, 1100, a Herald Saloon, Got more Morris Miners, including another van. Now that car obviously is a lot earlier than the 50s to 60s time frame, but well, we've got a Mark II Cortina in the background and it's just such a lovely old photo. It's on a K-Reg, so that's clearly not its original registration, but back in those days, if you registered a car that maybe had been imported or something, then you just got a current day registration. There's no age-related plates back then. This is a photo from my own collection now. We've got a 105E being given a bit of welly around an auto test course. Don't know where this was, it looks like maybe an agricultural centre or something like that. There's a Mark 1A14 in the background just waiting to take part. Another one of my old photos and here we've got an Austin Cambridge, that's either an A40 or an A50. Not much difference between them visually, just the 1200 or the 1500cc engine. Behind that, it could be, it looks like a Morris 10M, either late 30s or late 40s, they built them on the side of the wall. Now, side on view of a Morris Miner. There's a split screen, two door Miner. You can just about see the semaphore indicator there on the rear panel just behind the door edge. So if you left that sticking up when your passenger got out, um, they'd probably snap it off. And it's got the long body molding underneath the rear side window there. NYB 707, or it should include an old coach for once in this particular video. We've got a Bedford SB. If you do a Google search for NYB 707, you'll see photographs of this vehicle in a very different livery, but it's clearly the same coach. This it was operated by Snells, apparently. Do you know anything about them? Anyway, we've got a Vauxhall here, an L-type Vauxhall, maybe a Wyvern or possibly the Velox. Uh, but either way, a very, very clean example. That's absolutely immaculate. The couple stood there with it. Very chunky tyres on the back, the old town and country tyres. So, Maybe this photograph was taken towards the end of the year when the weather was getting worse. Over to Cowley now, and we've got a Morris. At first I thought this was a Morris Oxford Series 3, 
but it is in fact the Cowley. This is a Morris Cowley 1500. And um, you can tell a scalloped bonnet dates this one to about between 1956 and 1959. That had the 1489 B series engine. Now, thanks to Melvin for this, we got a Bond mini car. Now, I'm not quite sure if this is the original Mark A, built from 49 to 51, or the Mark B, which was built in 1951 and 1952. They look very, very similar. Both have Villiers engines under that front bonnet. But yeah, great photo. Thanks to Melvin and everyone who has supplied photos for this video. Now, three photographs from my own collection here. We've got a front on view of 320mmV. Curiously, the registration plate looks a lot cleaner than the rest of the car. But it's a Vauxhall Victor F Type Super. That's a London registration from July 1957. Or thereabouts there's a three-quarter view of the same car this is a fairly early f-type like i say this one was registered in july or august of 57 and these were launched in february of 1957. they had a one half liter four cylinder engine about 55 brake horsepower thereabouts three-speed gearbox um, but from 1958 onward you could have the newton drive two pedal transmission there's a side view of this early f-type and uh, the exhaust exited through those bumper ends you can just about see the circular outlets on the uh, rear bumper ends there beneath the rear lights but that did cause them to rot out quite a lot so that was dropped for the facelifted f-type another a40 or a50 cambridge here i'm not quite sure where this particular photograph was taken but yeah quite a smart four-door saloon and again not just like that old a105 that we saw earlier these were very prone to rotting out at the top of the rear wings just near the roof The Morris Mine in here, a head-on view. Now, judging by that bonnet trim, we are looking at a late version of the MM, the Highlight MM. So the early MMs had the low, the, had the low lights with the headlamps down next to the grille, and the highlights they moved the lamps up a little bit shortly before the Series Two was introduced. Next up, a side-on view, a bit of classic track direction here. We've got a Ferguson FE35. Um, these were introduced in sort of late 1956 and they were unofficially called the grey and gold because you had grey tin work but all the running gear the engine and so on was finished in like a goldy type colour very smart indeed but back to cars more familiar territory a couple of british classics here from the 50s uh, we have a mark one ford console and on the right introduced in 1958 these were the austin a40 farina this is a mark one a very large lamp bolted to the front tray there there's another rear three-quarter view probably of the same a40 and uh, looking at the rear you can see the uh, the mister panel stuck on the back window but this is a countryman you can just about see the hinges above the rear window and a thicker surround to the rear window as well that's that point out that this had a split lift up tailgate uh, which made it an all, all much more practical really now, thanks to Ian for this photograph, that's his wife on the left there, and a great colour photograph of his old Austin Healy Sprite, the Frog Eye Mark I. What a bonny car that is. There are a lot more photographs of this car on the image archive section of the, the uh, main old classic car site, so if you've not been there, please do so. Now, this photo probably dates to about 1970 or thereabouts, but a slightly earlier Mark I or Mark II Racing Mini, British Vita Racing. Um, Appears to have a lift off front, nice alley wheels on this one. But do you know where this is? Are we looking at Brands or perhaps Crystal Palace, somewhere like that? And anyway, back to road cars, and we have a two tone Ford Anglia 105E complete with period sun visor, bonnet raised, perhaps letting the engine cool off, boot lid raised um, because they're having a nice roadside picnic. I'm not quite sure of the location there. Back to Dagenham, one of Dagenham's finest from the 1950s, and a Ford Consul Mark I. Like I was saying before, the, the Mark I Zephyr they had a slightly different moulding along the front wing compared to the Consul, which we see here. This one's got a few extras. It's got some stick-on louvers on the front wing, a radio aerial, and a sun visor. But looking totally original, uh, original spec, no frills on this one, an Austin A35 two-door saloon. This was a forerunner to the uh, Mark I A40 that we saw before but shared much of the running gear. Now this dates to sort of the mid late 1960s and there's clearly a bit of a do on at a uh, Vauxhall facility in the car in the foreground is a Vauxhall Cresta, one of the, I think this is the PC series Cresta. A very large comfortable car, don't really survive in great numbers at all now. 
Back to Dagenham and a Ford 100E. Now this gentleman's clearly wrapped for chilly weather conditions and the four doors tell us that this is a Ford Prefect. The two door was either the Anglia or the Popular. Same engine though, 1172cc side valve apart from the last of the 107Es. Now two photographs uh, of a standard 8. I believe it's the same car in both photos. This one's a little bit fuzzy, the photograph, but well, we like our standard 8s here at Old Classic Car, so I thought to include it as well. Very smart little car, rival to the A30 and the A35, of course. Same engine capacity as well. This had the 803cc standard SC engine and exactly the same capacity as the Austin A30. And the standard 10 would have the 948cc version of this same engine. Carrying on with these original photos of British cars in the 50s and the 1960s, we have a, an overseas registered Austin A40 Devon here. I'm not quite sure where this is. Do you recognise that number plate? I'm guessing Australia, but I could, could be very wrong. It appears to have some sort of frilly blind over the rear window, just looking through the windscreen there. Now here's a nice old car. I do like these. I think this is a Humber Hawk, either a Mark III or a Mark IV. The later cars have a wraparound front bumper. The Mark 3 and 4 had the bumper you see then. It's got a roof rack on it now. Is this chap, I don't know, is that a uniform for a chauffeur or possibly a bus driver? I'm not quite sure. Now, very mangled is this next old car. Now, on the back of this, someone's written Jaguar on the back of this photograph, but that, to me, looks more like an Austin A70 Hereford that has clearly had an impact with something solid, possibly a lamppost, looking at the way the front end is wrapped around the uh, centre of the front there. But, oof, what a mess that is. And my thanks to Alan for this. This is, he says, Dr. Clegg's Morris Minor. This is another Highlight MM with a side valve engine, but this one was supercharged. Thank you very much for sending this over. This was photographed at Croft in the mid-1950s. That's a Yorkshire registration plate from 1953. And that supercharged Morris Minor MM rounds out part 12 of this series, original British cars of the 1950s and 1960s. Like I say, this is the 12th instalment of these lovely old photographs and once again my thanks to everyone that has sent over photographs that show these old British cars back in the day when they were still a common sight. If this is the first of the series you've watched, please go and check out the, the previous instalments because there are some fantastic old car photographs in there. I have set up a separate playlist just for the many, many photo collections that now appear on the uh, channel. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this one and uh, please keep an eye out for future videos and there'll be more along very, very soon. So bye for now.